The next presenter tonight is uh, Dr. Robert Howarth. He is the David a Atkinson Professor of Ecology and Environmental Bio Biology at Cornell. At Cornell, he directs the Agriculture, Energy, and Environment Program, an adjunct senior scientist at the Marine Biological Laboratory in Woods Hole, Massachusetts. He's the founding editor of the journal Biogeochemistry and was editor-in-chief of the journal from 1983 to 2004. He chaired the National Ac Ac Academy of Sciences Committee on Causes and Consequences of Coastal Marine Eutrophication from 1998 to 2000, co-chaired the International Scope Nitrogen Project from 1992 to 2002, directed the North American Nitrogen Center of the International Nitrogen Initiative from 2003 to 2006, and has been the chair of the International Scope Biofuels Project on the Environmental Effect of Biofuels since 2007. Dr. Howarth represents the State of New York on the Science and Technical Advisory Committee of the Chesapeake Bay Program. He's the editor of seven books, the author of more than 180 professional papers. Dr. Howarth. Thank you. I, I promise I'll be brief. Probably I'll say uh, less, take less time than that introduction took. I'm here tonight for two reasons. A, a I'm very pleased to be invited. The, um, this is an important event. I'm glad the organizers pulled it together, and I'm, I'm delighted to see all of you out there. My, my purpose in being here is twofold. I've worked on the uh, water quality effects of oil and gas development for 35 years, off and on. I was the head consultant for the state of Alaska, attorney general's office for the Exxon Valdez spill, and I've been involved in a lot of, a lot of other drilling uh, cases o over the decades. So I don't have much I can say specifically about what this event will do, but if there are general questions about water quality and what the gas industry can do, I can try to address those. The other reason I'm here, I want to speak very briefly to a, a new study that we've just completed, literally just completed. We just published it this week which is to look at the greenhouse gas footprint of natural gas from the Marcellus Shale Formation. I'm sure you've all heard the thought that uh, shale gas is a relatively clean fuel compared to coal or other fossil fuels. It's advertised all the time as something that has relatively low greenhouse gas emissions and might therefore make it a good transitional fuel. In fact, in one of the clips we saw earlier tonight, the uh, president of energy made exactly that statement. I've worked also on greenhouse gas emissions and global change for about 30 years. And so when I started hearing that statement on, on uh, television ads a year and a half or so ago, I thought, gee, that's interesting. I wonder how much scientific information is behind that. And I went into my office the next day and looked and searched and didn't find much. And I asked my uh, good friend Gail Steinhardt, who's the electronic librarian for Cornell University, if she could look more deeply, because she's more talented at finding things than I. And, uh, you know, after a week she came back and go, you know, there's no scientific evidence for this. So we took it on as a research challenge about 16, 17 months ago. We've been working hard on it with uh, uh, Tony Engrafia, who's an engineer at Cornell, and my uh, technician, Rene Santoro. Uh, we've looked carefully at the total greenhouse gas footprint of, of the natural gas. Not only what's released in carbon dioxide when you burn the fuel, but the leakage of methane. Because natural gas is mostly methane. There's a little bit of propane in there, a little bit of butane, as Tom and others have said, somewhat less than 5%. Uh, natural gas is 90, 95% methane. And methane is an incredibly powerful greenhouse gas. It is far more powerful than carbon dioxide. So if you have any leakages to the atmosphere, and of course, things do leak. Things happen, things leak. And in fact, industry purposefully vents natural gas all the time to the atmosphere. That has important greenhouse gas consequences. The best available data suggests that the major source of methane in the atmosphere today comes from the natural gas industry. And methane, currently, it's far more potent per atom or per molecule than is carbon dioxide. There's nowhere near as much of it in the atmosphere, but it's about, uh, in terms of its current potential for global warming, it's responsible for about 25% of much action as, as carbon dioxide is. So it's significant. Natural gas seems to be the major source. Anyway, we did what's actually a fairly boring exercise. We combed through industry data, uh, governmental data, just poured through this stuff, did the best job we could of pulling together the disparate, often poorly documented data to look at what the emissions are 
all the way along the life cycle analysis of, of, a, of a gas well. And we estimated that somewhere between 3.6 and 7.9 percent of the gas of a well leaks to the atmosphere over the time of the well. A lot of that from a shale gas well just in the first week or two following hydraulic fraction, sort of a free flow of gas at that period of time. When you look at what that means in terms of global warming, that's far more important than the carbon dioxide that's released when you burn the fuel. And you put it all together, and our conclusion is that this fuel has a greater greenhouse gas footprint than any other fossil fuel. It is worse than coal. Now, we published that paper uh, in a peer-reviewed journal. It came out this week. It's the first comprehensive analysis of the greenhouse gas footprint of shale gas. It's the only one in peer-reviewed paper, obviously. Uh, we've gotten huge press attention. I'm both tired and uh, happy to say. It's part of the reason I'm being short tonight. I'm tired. I've done 100 press interviews this week. And our report, which is a boring five-page technical paper, has been reported in over 1,000 newspapers in the last three days, including the U.S. Congress. on in a big way. NPR was doing a special tonight, which you all missed because you're here. I missed it too, but <laughs> just check out NPR tomorrow. And Fox TV News actually also showed it tonight. So it's getting great press attention. I'd be happy to talk about that later, but uh, I, I think we should get on to the questions as soon as we can. So thank you.